Hi everyone, my name is Lena Roscoe, Youth Ministry Apprentice, and this is Sundays at St. Hillary's. How are you all doing this week? I hope you're still doing well and you're excited to find out what we're learning about this time. This is for the four readings that go along with Sunday, December 12th, 2021. Now, our first reading is in Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 to 20, where it begins with reminders of gladness and rejoicing, for we have God on our side. He will remove obstacles and create peace where there would otherwise be destruction. We can have a profound sense of calm once realizing that God is living among you. For our Almighty God does not leave us stranded, but far from it, as he is a mighty savior. This gives us more than enough to be thankful for, for it is God who is there for us. And if God is for us, then who can truly ever be against us? He helps us with any problems that arise, because life is not perfect, it has its ups and downs, but it's still wonderful. And God is there through all of it. This can help put us at ease and realize, you know, especially you don't have to worry when God is going to take care of us. God keeps us safe and sound with his love and protection. If you look, you will find God around you. He is overjoyed by his children and he wants to give us the world, his world that he created with everything in it. The reading reassures us that with his love, he will calm all your fears. It tells us that he will save the weak and helpless ones and bring together those who were, ch who were chased away. How one day he will bring you home again. Another beautiful section of a good reading. Our God is wonderful and he is proud of us, the children he loves. He takes care of every single one of his children, no matter what. May we remember the promises of God and believe in his holy truths. Let us allow God to spread his goodness by letting him into our heart and our mind. Now, our second reading is in Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 to 6, which is a canticle like one of our readings last week. This one has the title of Songs of Praise for Salvation. This is because we can and should praise God for what he has done and does for us. It reminds us that God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. We can rejoice and just really have that sigh of relief because we know we are safe and we don't have to be scared. God loves us so much that he sent us Jesus, who is our hero all day and every day. That with God at our side, we can have strength. For with God, we do not walk this life alone. He is there to be ever present in our lives with love. We can call on God anytime and anywhere. We can lean on him as our rock and our stronghold. We can rejoice, like this reading reminds us, because we are given forgiveness. And this means that we can be saved. So, hallelujah. This reading says that we should celebrate God, acknowledging everything he does for his children, that the God we have is mighty and wonderful. He and his son, Jesus, are truly great. Because God gives us so much to be thankful for, let's not hold back on our praises. Because we love God like he loves us, we can show it, you know, a little bit every day, all the time. May we let God's love give us a sense of peace. Let us turn to our Heavenly Father for strength as we wholeheartedly trust in him. Now, our third reading is in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7, which is short, but it tells us important things, like that we should celebrate God. My friends, how do you celebrate God? Is it in what you say, in what you do? Whatever it is, I'd love to hear it. So feel free to share it with me. How we should be considerate in all you do. 
Also with that, we can pause and reflect and think, what are some times when we were considerate? Are there more opportunities for us where we realize we could, you know, be more considerate or should be more considerate, you know, because we can improve each and every day. The reading tells us though, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. I love that verse, don't you? For us spending our time in prayer, rather than worrying, which, you know, praying would be a much better use of our precious time. And this is so true, but we often forget. Let us remember, though, to breathe through it and leave it to God. To keep our communication open to God in request and thanks, we can receive God's peace, which will transform our lives as we live in Jesus. Praying is our direct line to God to say anything. What we're thankful for, what we're hoping for, what we're worried about, etc. God listens to us and wants us to seek him out. Turn to him. May we remember these and other important lessons from God. Let us follow his righteous path for us with Jesus as our leader to guide us through. Now, our fourth and final reading is in Luke chapter 3, verses 7 to 19, where it talks about a time when people came to John the Baptist for baptism. John told them that they should not show that they were sorry for their sins, that they had learned from their mistakes, and that they were turning to God by the way you live. One was not guaranteed protection from their ancestors like a lot of them thought, you know, like maybe how it was back then and then now it's like kind of changing. And then in the present day, obviously this is the case because we are each our own person and we can easily be separated from our family roots. That only good will remain. We can show our intentions by our words and actions because our genuineness will be able to show through. So whatever good there is will be visible and any bad will have no space in our life. Now, this crowd at the time asked John what to do. He replied saying that the people should share with what they have, especially if it's even a bit more than they need to not take more than is necessary, but this applies to all people, not just them back in the day, to be happy with what we have, because that really is enough. This is something that, you know, especially in the modern day, we really need to try and not forget. There are important lessons like these to hold on to, so only take what you need and share wherever you can. God gave us it all so we can all appreciate it, make sure we do. As well, the people at the time were looking forward to the soon to be coming Messiah and thought perhaps that it could have been John. He explained though that, I baptize you with water, he said, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am and that he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, this is a powerful statement, and it reminds us that God is all-powerful, and so is his son, Jesus. So while John was great, they then would know that the Messiah would be far greater. And the Messiah is Jesus, our special leader to guide us down the right path, then and now. It was John, though, that even warned people that the Messiah would be the one to separate the good from the bad. And it reinforces that John the Baptist really was a big helper of Jesus with God working through him. John was even put into prison by Herod for his stance on the ruler Herod's marriage. This shows us that John the Baptist, along with other important people in the Bible, were willing to speak the truth no matter what. This shows us that sometimes people need to do things even when they're difficult. So remember that. May we let the way we live reflect what is in our heart, mind, and body, and spirit. Let us remember that Jesus is the Messiah, and he baptized us in a one-of-a-kind way. Well, this has been wonderful talking, and I'm so glad you joined me. Before we go, I'd like to end our time together in prayer. So I invite you to join me in your own special way. Dear God, 
Thank you for calming our fears and for the goodness you share with us. May we willingly let you into our lives so you can transform it in the most magnificent ways. Thank you for saving us and for all you continue to do for each of your children. May we rejoice in your wonderful name now and forever. Thank you for all of the knowledge you offer us and the peace you willingly give us. May we pay attention and follow in the guidance you have kindly given. Thank you for teaching us how to live. May we remember that Jesus, the Messiah, is the greatest there ever was and ever will be. Please help us hold on to only goodness. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me and I hope you will next time. Until then, this has been Sundays at St. Hilary's.